This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. That's right. This show is just what you need. I'm your host, John Solberg. Welcome to the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Today's episode is being brought to you by The Butcher Shop, purveyors of highly sought after 100% Australian non-crossbred Wylara 9 Plus Briskets, and as always, they are hand-picked just for you. The Butcher Shop has been retailing the finest meats for the past 15 years. Every week, they are shipping out competition-quality meats to many of the biggest teams in the competition scene across the nation. Simply put, teams who use The Butcher Shop win, and they win often. Not a competitor, but still have an eye for the finer cuts in life? Great news for you. The Butcher Shop is shipping some of the finest prime, dry-aged, Australian Wagyu, and Japanese Wagyu steaks to people just like you and me who aspire to be the kings and queens of the cul-de-sacs. The Butcher Shop always has Berkshire, Compart Duroc, Allegiance Duroc, and Prairie Fresh all-natural pork in stock, and again, always hand-picked just for you. You might be saying, John, all that sounds great, but what about some exotic stuff? Well, rest easy knowing the Butcher Shop will get you your next elk steak or camel roast. They'll ship it out promptly. Yes, they can ship you camel. So let's review. The best competition briskets? Check. The best pork selection? Check. Giving you better overall options to cook at home? Check. So give the Butcher Shop a call today. 850-458-8782. That's 850-458-8782. Mention the Barbecue Central Show for 10% off your entire order each and every time. You can also interact with them on their Facebook page, facebook.com slash The Butcher Shop. Shop is spelled S-H-O-P-P-E. The Butcher Shop, home of the 100% Australian non-crossbred Wylara 9 Plus briskets. And here's what's going on in today's show from March 22nd, 2016. It's all Greg Rempe. Let's go. Welcome to the Barbecue Central Show. This is the show you found. A couple audio issues there going from uh, hour one to two. Apologize. I believe we got them aced out. Also, I believe we have fixed the tune-in radio stream as well. So should be firing on all cylinders right now. Again, you know, with the horse meat, it's a meat. There is an opportunity for as much as we talk. Do you remember, was it a year ago we were talking about uh, red meat is being... This is Chris Payne What? Ohio, and you are listening to Barbecue Central. All right. Thank you, Chris, for interrupting. We were talking about how, I don't know if red meat was running out, but uh, pink slime was being ballyhooed about, and how was that being used, and it is being used to supplement... Some meat percentage because the amount of meat being consumed by Americans was substantial and it's just not an endless supply of meat. So we had had a discussion. I had had a discussion with Dave Bosca maybe a year or so ago and said, well, let's have this awkward discussion. Certainly, as uh, David mentioned there in the chat room a couple minutes ago, uh, United States and probably some other countries have made horses pets. You consider them pets like dog. You don't eat dog. Dog's a pet. Dog's, you know, smarter than a human, whatever you want to say. Uh, Same thing with cats. Not birds, though. I mean, birds are pets, but eat birds, um, eat chickens, eat pigs, eat cows. I mean, everything else on the farm, I think, you're pretty much eating except the other four-legged animal, uh, the horse. So that has somehow made its way into it's a worker, it's a laborer, it's a pet, uh, you ride them for show. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and make farmers' arguments. Uh, I think in a lot of those 4-H instances, you raise hogs like they were your own, and they get the big blue ribbon at the 4-H tournament or fair or whatever it is, and you put them on a cart and they're off to slaughter, and then you're eating Mr. Giggles a month later or sooner. So if there's an option to supplement the 
red beef that we're eating now with something widely available and other than sounding gross, like eating horse, separating that, if you can think about it in a vacuum, not a bad idea. A lot of horses. It's lean meat. It doesn't necessarily look all that different once it's cooked. It's a little... It's a little different color than you're used to in its raw state, certainly. Just Google horse meat in France or horse meat in Italy on the Google's images and see what you see. I mean, it looks a little different, but when it's cooked, you know, it's got that nice caramel colored sear to lock in the juices, you know, all the good stuff. (laughs) Maybe. If we're opening up dialogue and we're trying to reach, here's the season of reaching across the aisles and trying to bring parties together. I mean, oh my God, PETA would be in a all out rage, a fit if somehow the horse meat situation was able to regain steam, which if I'm not incorrect, Dave, um, it, it was allowed in certain states and then it wasn't, then it, I think it got re allowed. And now since we had talked about it last got disallowed again or outlawed or whatever. But on its head, again, sounds, you want to put it in the same category as a dog or a cat or some other type of domesticated animal pet. But if you look at it, it's, you know, really not. Now, I don't know if you want to, Instead of sending Zenyatta out for, you know, to take a stud, I don't know if you want to grab her up for a hefty sum and say you're eating the prime rib of horse or something like that. I mean, that's a lot of a lot of muscle on those thoroughbred horses. But there's got to be, you know, a kind of a lazy horse or one that's just, you know, not overly well kept like most Americans. A little doughy. Probably tastes pretty good. Kind of got a buttery texture. Dave says all good with gravy. Absolutely. I mean, can we get more gravy? Is that possible? Go to Bob Evans. I'd like a horse meat, an open face horse meat sandwich with gravy, triple gravy and a piece of lemon pie, please. As Dave says, correct. Government issues said they would not pay for the inspections and the companies would have to. So your federal government isn't going to purvey over these. The company's going to, you know, that means more money. And of course, money also is not limitless. Who is this? Who is this? I have no idea. This has the potential of going all kinds of bad right out of the gate. But why not? Let's go ahead and uh, pick up line 216. You're on the phone. Hey, Greg. um, I'm telling you what. uh, I hadn't thought about it before, but you're making this horse sound pretty tasty. I want to know where I can get some. You can't get horse anywhere. Isn't that just the problem? Who is this? Who is this? Because um, the way that you're talking about it... um, makes it seem like every American should have access to some delicious horse. Don't you think everybody, not only should you have horses jaunting about in your fields ready to ride, but some should be ready to be head off to slaughter with the rest of the cows and the pigs. I mean, what's the difference? I don't see any difference. I want some horse in my face. We, ne- Sir, I don't know your name. You've uh, decided to remain anonymous, but we should start a uh, petition. You will be the first to sign. Well, second, aside from me. And we will My start... My name is Horse Spatch Cock, and <laughs> I need horse in my face. Pronto? You need horse pronto, sir. We can go to Mexico. Please. According to Butcher Barbecue, we can go to Mexico and have all the horse we want. Well, I, I like I said... Yes. I had never considered it before. Why not? I've been watching your show now for Big fan? quite a while. and At least 15 or 20 horse, minutes? Eating horse now sounds like the right thing to do. All right. Well, thank you for your vote of confidence, sir. Oh, my vote is this. Right. He's voting pro-horse this year in the election. 
See, it's not just me who, well, it is just me that has great ideas. But, you know, I'm just saying, if all lives matter in the human race, all lives shouldn't be that discriminated against on once we sent to the slaughterhouse and put in our gullets. Horse, watch out. I believe your days are numbered. It's not just the glue factory for you anymore. Nay, sayers. See? I just did that. Just did that. He did that. He did that, Mr. Giggles and all. This is a great show. Would you like to hear the rest of it? Head over to the bbqcentralshow.com. There will be a link in today's show notes to take you to the complete episode. This show had a visit from Texas Embedded Correspondent and Pitmaster of Road Cookers, Doug Scheiding, Tim Shop from Tim's Full Belly Deli, and one of my all-time favorite guests, Sterling Ball of Big Papa Smokers. You want to go check that out. You want to find something over there? Hit that search box over at the bbqcentralshow.com. Thing works like a charm. Guarantee. Find something you want to hear. Send me a note, John, J-O-N, John, at the bbqcentralshow.com. I'll see what I can put together for you. Please check out The Butcher Shop over on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Butcher Shop, shop spelled S-H-O-P-P-E. And until next time on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less, I'm your host, John Solberg. I look forward to talking to you again soon.